Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about a huge storm system with a coastal hugger and another bomb cyclone, as well as multiple rounds of severe weather with tornadoes next week. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good morning, everyone. This is your November 3rd update and we got a lot of, to talk about this morning with a lot of moving parts going to be setting up over the next seven to ten days let's take a look at the setup this morning as we've got multiple rounds of precipitation uh, back into the, uh, the pacific northwest into washington and oregon and, and parts of Calif northern california that's going to continue for much of the week as we got that cold rain uh, over uh, Oklahoma and Texas this morning into Arkansas, that's going to be continuing moving off into the southeast with colder conditions filtering in behind it. As we look to the tropics, it's quiet out in the Atlantic, but we did have that, storm, that little development down here by Costa Rica. That has now crossed over on the Pacific side, and that's got a 50% chance of developing over the coming days. And these little entities right here, is going to play a key role in the weather and next week with a lot of ample moisture supply uh, going to be tapping into so let's take a look at the overall hazard index this morning and the, you can definitely see these freeze watches and warnings have just dropped further south as we've continued throughout the week uh, that uh, well in advance cold front that we advertise now we've got those uh, you know freeze watches in parts of the panhandle tonight and going into ports of uh, Kansas and Oklahoma and all up into Missouri and Illinois and into Kentucky and to Tennessee and Arkansas as well as that that freeze line and frost will just continue further on and I do feel parts of Oklahoma and even North Texas is going to start implementing some frost advisories as we go into tonight so let's take a look at the overall setup for on the jet stream because this kind of gives you a, a true depiction of what's really happening there's the atmospheric river continuing to play a role in the weather continuing with that ample moisture supply we've got that low pressure and this is the setup for today wednesday november the third there's that low pressure down south that's bringing all the rain into texas now this is actually going to continue into the gulf of mexico and not form into any tropical entity but that's actually going to cross into florida bring in some heavier rain but once it gets off the coast off the southeast coast it's going to start developing so that's the system that's going to be our coastal hugger as we go through the weekend and into monday for portions of the northeast so let's take a look at this system on the 850 millibar uh heights and by the time we get into Saturday, that uh, September, I mean, the November the 6th time frame, you can see this low pressure off the Carolina coast. It's really starting to get its act together, you know, de de developing some winds, wind speed al along with it. And it's going to traverse up the coastline, bringing some impacts right along the coast in the Carolinas, uh, going into the Jersey Shore, uh, and eventually getting into portions of Long Island and eventually into, uh, you know, parts of Connecticut and Cape Cod as well as we go throughout the week because by the time we get into monday time frame this low pressure system really starts to amplify and really start to deepen off the east coast again so we have a yet another system that's going to impact a lot of the same areas that nor'easter uh, impacted just a, a week or so ago uh, in parts of uh, parts of long island here parts of uh, Ma uh, get it into Connecticut, Rhode Island, into uh, portions of Massachusetts here, as well as this Cape Cod, as this is gonna remain offshore, but it's gonna bring those stronger winds and some heavier rains right along those, those uh, coastal communities. Because we take a look at the overall uh, low pressure system, it's 1,002 millibar by the time we get into that Saturday night, Sunday morning time frame, And you can see it's spreading some heavier rain right off the coast here in Cape Hatteras, uh, into portions of Virginia and North Carolina as well. And this will traverse up the coastline. Uh, as you can see back behind it, it rapidly clears. There's not much happening in between good chunk of the chunk of the country. Just those coastal vents with those atmospheric river continuing to play a part. And then this, this uh, key low pressure system will be our all eyes on deck with this system as it traverses up the coast, especially if to Sunday 
getting into into that monday time frame because by the time we get into that monday morning time frame you can see it rapidly deepens to a 981 millibar low pressure that's a 20 millibar drop in just about a 24 hour time span this is, remains pretty safely offshore but it's going to be close enough it's going to bring some higher wind gust and some definitely some heavier rain right along uh long right along like long island here into uh portions of uh, connecticut and rhode island and massachusetts especially the cape again you're going to be hit hard with the system as well so a lot of these same areas that got hit into rhode island with that nor'easter that you just got impacted that you know seven days ago seven to ten days ago is going to get hit again with this particular system not nearly as intense not nearly as strong or anything like that but still it's going to bring some higher impact events uh, for that area and that goes into new hampshire as well as southern maine as well because you can take a look at the wind speed a lot of the heavier wind gusts remains safely offshore but it's still going to be close enough you could still pick up some tropical storm force wind gusts right along the coastline in, into uh, north carolina portions of virginia going into delaware and to um you know parts of jersey here and a long island as you get up towards the new, new england here you're going to start picking up a little bit higher wind gas because it's going to be a little bit closer to you guys as well but still yeah some 30 40 up towards the 50 mile per hour wind gust at times is definitely not out of the question by the time we get into that monday time frame with some heavier rain uh as well so now we take a look at the big picture because now we go into next week and here's the setup for Monday, November the 8th here. You can see this low pressure system. That is going to be our, our cyclone right off the coastline here of the portions of the Northeast. You see it rapidly warms up in the midsection of the country. We are in a La Nina pattern. La Ninas typically favor more volatile type patterns. We get a lot of swings in temperatures. We get rapid swings of you know cold and then it warms up again. And so we're going to be in that transition phase next week where we rapidly warm up in the midsection of the country, but then all hands on deck again with our developing system just south of Alaska here. This low pressure system is a yet another looks like potential bomb cyclone looks to take place between that Monday and Tuesday time frame with this, this low pressure rapidly developing again into a deepening 972 millibar low pressure. So that's yet another classification of another bomb cyclone, not nearly as intense as the last one. The last one got down to a record 942. This is a 972. Some GFS models have it about a 965. But either way, it's gonna be another high impact event and that's gonna set the stage to bring multiple rounds of severe weather in the midsection of the country as we get into midweek and then colder air in the backside funneling it by next weekend. So, but yeah, by, by Tuesday, there's that 972 millibar low pressure, just bringing some heavier rain now. So you're gonna get daily rain showers off the Pacific Northwest this week with that atmospheric river. Then you have that another bomb cyclone coming into play by the time we get on that Monday and especially that Tuesday timeframe with some more heavier rains impacting the coast and that is going to continue to spread inland because there's the setup on the water vapor imagery you can see where we warm and where we're dry all, all the you know brown shaded areas that's going to be all your drier shaded areas because you're in between systems there's that there's that uh, system off uh, the east coast here impacts you sunday and portions of monday but by tuesday it's going to be safely offshore and moving away right but in the mid but in the middle there's not going to be much going on it's going to be pretty much dry high and dry you're in between systems and uh you've got all that warmer warmer air filtering back in the pattern but now we've got that bomb cyclone of off the off the west coast here bringing that ample moisture supply back into portions of northern california and off the west coast here and that is going to be our culprit for our severe threat because look at the vorticity index by the time we get in that tuesday uh no, tuesday november night time frame look there these are well to the north right so when they're well to the north that creates the south wind that's more like a zonal flow that is a warm flow and that's why you're warm for a good section of the country as the winds traverse across from west to east at these multiple vorticities are well to the north upwards into uh, portions of a canada here 
but this is the one that we're gonna have to pay attention to with our potential bomb cyclone as we get into that tuesday november the night time frame because this is actually going to be diving in and it's going to get elongated when it gets elongated it stretches out and there on the back side on the south side look at that look as it feeds down off this system and it pulls in that moisture remember those little systems i showed you off the pacific coast they're going to be possibly you know developing into some tropical storm activity acti acti activity but then you know as this pulls across and pulls that moisture in that's that's going to be able to have that lift and create that and help feed these systems moving forward and we've seen this with several rounds with what pamela we've seen it with rick and that's going to be setting the stage again as we get into the mid portions of next week by the time we get into that wednesday november the 10th uh time frame you can see that vorticity index continues to dive southeastward as it does it's going to tap into that warm that go, that gulf moisture supply and then with that clash in temperatures again with that warmer air out, out ahead of it and that colder air filtering out on the backside, we're going to be setting the stage for more severe weather because looking at october we had a very active october for on tornado front in fact it was the second most uh you know second most tornadoes on record with 119 for the entire United States and Oklahoma alone had 31 of those. So that's what we had to deal with in October. And it looks like by the time we get into that November the 11th timeframe on the 500 millibar, that is an inverted trough. Inverted trough, that's the prime setup for more severe weather and more potential tornadoes over portions of uh, Oklahoma and portions of Northeast Texas and to Arkansas and portions of Louisiana. A lot of the same areas that you actually experienced with that, that round of severe weather that you dealt with last week. So, but look, by the time that November 11th timeframe, it's almost like you drew it up, right? This is the, the probability index where you would typically see uh, tornadoes by the time we get into that November 11th time frame and this is exactly where the inverted trough sets up over portions of uh, Oklahoma here Northeast Texas Arkansas getting into Louisiana and uh, Mississippi and portions of Alabama this is typically where you would see tornadoes this time of year and that is identical to where you would see that inverted trough setting up by the time we get into that November the 11th time frame so and look, look at the uh, water vapor, water uh, vapor transport index going forward. It's going to be able to pull in some of these. You can almost see it off the screen here with these little red shaded areas. That is ample moisture supply. So as this, as that jet comes across, it's able going to pull this energy from the south and lift it to the north and tap it into this mechanism. And that's going to set the stage for more severe weather over this portion of the country by the time we get into that Wednesday, going into that Thursday uh, time frame of next week. And that just continues going down into the Dixie Alley area with more severe weather and tornadoes, unfortunately, for this area. So as we move through on the back side, we've got more colder air going to be filtering in on the back side. So once we have that severe weather th move through, then we've got that cold air as that low continues to dot southeast. Now we're looking at more 20 degree below average anomalies filtering back into the midsection of the country, filtering back into Texas, you know, after you see a warm up after you're cold right now. So there's a lot of transition and this goes into Sunday as well, right? So by the time we get into that Sunday, November the 14th time frame, again, that pattern just continues to amplify it all the way down into portions of the deep south with those colder anomalies. And this would just extend southeast as we go through the like the mid mid month time frame. So here's your rainfall prospects for the next nine days. There's your atmospheric river, light rain pretty much all week, all week long uh, for the rest of the week. And then by the time we get into that Monday and Tuesday time frame, you've got some heavier rains. So these are going to be adding up to some totals uh, for portions of Washington and Oregon and California. You can see it's dry again for much of South Southern California, much of Arizona, much of New Mexico. Unfortunately, you just miss uh, these systems. And then as it goes inland, a lot of this is going to transfer into uh, some snow on the backside 
And then the change would be well to the north here as those vorticity indexes that I showed you well to the north as those move through, that's going to bring rain for portions of the Dakotas and Minnesota and uh, portions of Wisconsin. And then where it's cold enough, it's going to snow on the backside. There's the setup for Texas. And as those systems you're dealing with right now, but then it's going to be dry for a good chunk of five to six days. And then the rains come back for Texas by Wednesday of next week amplifies over Oklahoma, Arkansas, getting into Louisiana, and then really deepens over the Dixie Alley area, over the Tennessee, Alley, Tennessee Valley, getting into portions of a Kentucky here with some heavier rain. And there's the setup for uh, the rain prospects off the East Coast going into Florida. A lot of the heavier rains remain off the East Coast, but it's still going to be close, close enough with that coastal hugger that's going to bring some heavier rain just right along the coastline here, as you can see moving forward uh, through, you know, throughout the week. There's your snow for the next nine, nine, nine days with those vorticities coming across. Uh, you got that one system right now, then the backside comes in next week for the Rockies. But then as that vorticity on the backside comes in Monday and Tuesday of Wednesday of next week, you're probably going to see some heavier snows starting to filter out in portions of the Dakotas. And this will actually stand, extend into portions of Minnesota and getting into Wisconsin as we go into you know next weekend so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm